Hello, I'm the JMO, and welcome to another episode of Come Internet With Me, the web show with a gentle premise, browsing the web together. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video down below, and you can also find links to the things that we visit in the blog post that's also in the section below too. Um, you can support the show and all of my other work at comeinternetwith.me slash support. So today's guest is Ruth Catlow. Ruth Catlow, who has a Wikipedia page. Perhaps our first guest with a wiki page. Let's, let's have a look at both. Wikipedia says Ruth Catlow is an English artist, theorist, and curator whose practice focuses on critical investigations of digital and network technologies and their emancipatory potential. She's the director with Mark Garrett of Furtherfield Gallery, common space and online arts writing platform based out of London, which the duo founded in 1997. Ruth says about herself, artist, curator, and researcher of emancipatory network cultures, practices, and poetics an artistic director of Furtherfield, a not-for-profit international community hub for arts, technology, and social change founded with Mark Garrett in London in 1996. She's the co-editor of Artists Rethinking the Blockchain, 2017, curator of the touring exhibition, New World Order, 2017 to 2018, and runs the award-winning Dao Art and Blockchain Lab series with Ben Vickers in collaboration with the Goethe Institute, principal investigator for the Blockchain Research Lab at Serpentine Galleries. She's the director of Decal Decentralized Arts Lab, a further filled initiative with, uh, which exists to mobilize research development by leading artists using blockchain and Web3 technologies for fairer, more dynamic and connected cultural ecologies and economies. She's also a member of Guild and a very lovely person. Ruth, would you like to come internet with me? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi, Ruth. Oh, God, that's kind of intense. <laughs> yeah. It's weird when you hear it read out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's really not what it's meant for. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't believe you've got a Wikipedia page. That's really fancy. I didn't know that. that. That is an artifact of the very fantastic feminist Wikipedia movement that Wicked. has decided that women need to be represented well, in Wikipedia. Of course. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. And I knew some people had done it, and then it changes all the time. It's amazing. I, I have no, I, it's really weird, the things that appear on there and the things that disappear from there. <laughs> it's very weird. It's just like, <laughs> this is what everybody else thinks about me. Yeah. In real time. Do you have an alert set up for, for the changes? No, I should, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I just, every now and then I go on there and go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I remember that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah what have you been up to somewhere. today away from the internet? I mean, you spoke to me earlier, but like away yeah. from the internet. I haven't been away from the internet very much at all today, but. Since 1996. <laughs> Well, yeah, that is a bit of a problem. <laughs> but um, at the moment, just as a kind of personal kind of life quality hygiene, I am spending a lot more time in my local woodlands. Oh, lovely. Uh, yes. So even in the gloom, the woodlands are kind of inspiring. And I'm learning birds and trees mm -hmm. and different plant life at the moment so how are that... you learning the birds are you are you doing bird song first and then appearance or are you doing it it's all around? like all at once it's iterative it's mm -hmm. twitterative twitterative love it yes <laughs> so we uh i go and listen to the birds in the woodland then i'm listening to the lovely tweet of the week podcast which are like the omnibus edition of the radio 4 tweet of the day okay where people which is really great and then I have a book, the Observer Book of Birds. So I'm kind of just trying to match all these things up. It's not, it's actually not that easy. It's like Pokemon in real life. <laughs> I've never actually played Pokemon. Oh, that's a shame. It's like yeah. bird watching. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so what are we going to internet together today? We are going to internet DeFi. DeFi. Decentralized finance. Okay. Now, this is partly because it, it scares me. Mm -hmm. And I, it scares me and bores me. 
all at once. And I thought it would be more fun to do it with you. Okay. It's slightly less scary to do it with you. And all of those kinds of things. Well, let us share. Let's share the screen. Can I just ask before we start, does mm -hmm. your what does your gut tell you about how this search is going to feel? Is it going to be like really dull? Or do you think it's going to lead us into some interesting territories? I mean, let me interrupt myself before you even answer that. This is partly your fault for saying earlier that no one had ever, no one had ever said, let's just go shopping for this. Yeah. So if it gets really, either really wild or really dull, I think we should try and, uh, we should try and speculate. <laughs> <laughs> in the decentralized finance market. I sh oh, I should have put some stuff in, like because Brave Brave Browser has a has, a, has like a built-in um, wallet and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I, I, if I'd known, I could uh, we could have put some uh, some dye in it or something. Right. I, I do a... have some dye. This is why I'm on my slightly crappy computer. Oh, I, I see. Do have Mose I do have MetaMask set up with some dye in it. So should we need to do that? Well, you can share your screen. What, as yes, long as you're I can share my keys. screen, exactly. Wow, okay. <laughs> awesome. Should we start with Coindesk? Coindesk. Yes. I love that it draws inspiration from blockchain. What is DeFi loading? Oh, September the 18th. Updated September the 30th. I interrupted you before you, I gave you a chance for you to tell me what kind of search you expect this to be because you're experienced now. You must have some um, sense. I think it's going to be interesting. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's more, I think it's going to be just as interesting to see what people writing about DeFi are writing about it. And what yeah it, it like the the imaginary that they're using yes defi is short for decentralized finance an umbrella term for a variety of financial applications in cryptography or blockchain geared towards disrupting financial intermediaries so it draws inspiration from blockchain the car the technology behind the digital currency bitcoin I mean, we should say that as we're recording, it's Bitcoin's all-time high. Yes. How's, yes. Blimey, is it? Is that the all-time high? Yeah, it was an hour ago. I'm not sure if it's dropped, but... That's another thing I don't have alerts set for. <laughs> not it's my, Wikipedia it just for the, my telegram was <laughs> like, I was thinking about it. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, um, so... The technology behind Bitcoin allows several entities to hold a copy of a his history of transactions, meaning it isn't controlled by a single central source. That in that's important because centralized systems and human gatekeepers could limit the speed and sophistication of transactions while offering users less direct control over their money. DeFi is distinct because it expands the use of blockchain from simple value transfer to more complex financial use cases. Bitcoin and many other digital native assets stand out from legacy digital pay payment methods, which run, which are those run by Visa and PayPal, as they remove all middlemen from transactions. I'm getting a little bit of feedback when I'm speaking. Oh. Um, I do have headphones on. What about now? Hmm. Is it still? Yeah, that's odd. Let's see what happens. Mm, I don't know why it would make any difference. Does that make any difference to the sound? Now? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it did. yeah, it did. Better? Yes. I've taken my mic, my freestanding mic out. Maybe that will. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's much quieter now. I've got still a little bit, but whatever. It's fine. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin and many other digital native assets. Oh, I already said that. Direct pur purchases aren't the only typical type of transaction or contract overseen by big companies. Financial applications such as loans, insurance, crowdfunding, derivatives, betting, and more are also in their control. Cutting out the middlemen from all kinds of transactions is one of the primary advantages of DeFi. 
What do we think so far? Can I just say, I just think it's a brilliant piece of uh, fiction here that they say direct purchases aren't the only type of transaction. It's like, I'd be really interested to know what percentage of transaction in crypto are direct purchases. I bet you it's a tiny percent. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I get the feeling that eventually money will flow into the ecosystem, but it won't come back. Yes. It will just be transmuted through all sorts of different chains and coins and moved yeah. around. Um, bef- did you see that the... Anyway, no, let's not talk about flash loans because <laughs> we should learn about them. Uh, before it was commonly known as decentralized finance, the, Id- of the idea of DeFi was often called open finance. Now, I'm just going to Google that. Sorry, Ecosia it. Um, Very good. And I'm interested in what the provenance of the term is. It's from banking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so this this guy, Pinset Masons, UK moving from open banking, which is the APIs into people's bank accounts, to open finance. Businesses and consumers can expect greater control over how their financial data is used, meaning they will be able to access innovative new services, such as uh, as the UK moves to a system of open finance. Open banking regime allows third parties to link into systems of banks to access payments, data, blah, blah, blah. So what does open finance say last year? (laughs) The UK is already looking beyond uh, payments data with a, a future of open finance in mind with the first instance enabled by access to pensions data. Dispute resolution, however, remains a key issue that will need to be solved in a consistent way, as does international standardization. So one of the things I think that we should look at is dispute resolution in the DeFi space. Oh, yes. But before we rush ahead, Mm -hmm. the UK is already looking beyond payments data with the future of open finance in mind. So when they say... So the, the implication is that payments data is open. What does that actually mean? Who can see what? I think, I mean, my, in my inexpert opinion and knowledge of this space, yeah. when it means that payments data is open, it's when you have linked a tool into your bank account. So your, your transactions okay, so in your bank account can be seen by zero or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So Whereas it's, it's not open like, like a, a bank. <laughs> so it's like the bank is like providing an API. Yeah. It's like an API to lots and lots of different. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah. But not open like a blockchain. No, okay. not as far as I'm aware. Let's go back to the DeFi. Most applications that call themselves DeFi are built on top of Ethereum, the world's second largest cryptocurrency platform, which sets itself apart from the Bitcoin platform in that it's easier to build other types of decentralized applications beyond simple transactions. These more complex financial use cases were highlighted by Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin back in 2013 in the original Ethereum white paper. That's because Ethereum's platform for smart contracts, which automatically execute transactions as certain conditions are met, offers more flexibility. Ethereum programming languages such as Solidity are specifically designed for creating and deploying such smart contracts. This is actually a very good piece of writing. For example, say a user wants his or her money to be sent to a friend next Tuesday, but only if the temperature climbs above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, according to weather.com. Such rules can be written in a smart contract. (laughs) I wonder if that condition has ever been made on the payment to a friend. 
I will yeah. pay you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why that example? I mean, that is fantastic that that has now become the example. I'm thinking about like the about the climate change implications and how it should be the other way around. Be like, we'll only pay out if the carbon parts per million goes yeah. below, yeah. goes below a certain amount. Yeah, that would be a good way of automating carbon emission taxes, wouldn't it? Yeah, like, I think Carbon Coin does something similar on its yield curve, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, but it's been a while since I read the white paper. Which smart contracts at the core dozens with smart contracts at the core dozens of DeFi applications are operating on Ethereum, some of which are explored below. Ethereum 2.0, an upcoming upgrade to Ethereum's underlying network, could give these apps a boost by chipping away at Ethereum scalability issues. The most popular types of DeFi applications include decentralized exchanges, Online exchanges help users exchange currencies for other currencies, whether US dollars for Bitcoin or Ether or DAI. DEXs are a hot type of exchange, a hot type of exchange. Oh. Hot. I think they mean it's popular and trendy. Like they used to call links back in the 90s. Yeah. Hot links. yeah, a hot link, <laughs> a hot dex. I was thinking the other day, can you imagine if crypto takes over as like the default finance and like the news, the Financial Times has got illustrations like this in it? This is partly why I wanted this search to be the search. Because I, I like it's really hard to imagine how the world is different if that's what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's like a psychedelic news, like, yeah, the memes yeah. would just be on. The memes. <laughs> this meme crashed the global economy today. Yeah. Yeah. The meme <laughs> index was down by 400%. <laughs> <laughs> the, cat, the cat cartel came in and, and, and like, boosted <laughs> meme values across the internet. It, uh, it would be, uh, you'd have a whole kind of, you, you could have a whole kind of, cat meme and doge it would be like the the cat index and the doge for the doge 000. index yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. It's amazing like all of the memes as nfts and they're all being yeah. bought and sold and yeah amazing exactly <laughs> that's a i mean to be honest it's probably already been built on one of those like nft rare sites that you could buy art there's probably leaderboards and all sorts of stuff like that. Yes, we, that, we, that might be something for us to go and look at. I, I, I was going to uh, tune my search to be DeFi art. So if we find we have time, this yeah, would be a good let's, let's place to go next. Yeah, let's finish this definition and then we'll look at DeFi yeah. art. Okay. Um, So it says that decentralized exchanges uh, connect users directly so they can trade cryptocurrencies with another without trusting an intermediary with their money. It's interesting that they don't get into the technical. Yeah, that is interesting. The float, the, the way that they float, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, stable coins, a cryptocurrency that's tied to an asset outside of a cryptocurrency, the dollar, the euro, for example. Lending platforms. These, lend, these platforms use smart contracts to replace intermediaries such as banks that manage lending in the middle. So I, I think it's interesting that I was looking at uh, something a friend of ours said when I asked them to tell me what MakerDAO was. And because these things all seem they, like all these definitions seem like like super neutral, like they're they're really technical, but they discourage you from thinking about what it actually does to people's behavior mm -hmm. and what people are doing with this stuff yeah so like why does someone want a loan to take out a loan in a stable coin now and and also it's really slippery so it's really hard to kind of think about why someone would so you would want to take out a loan in a stable coin because you can't get access, I presume, to 
liquidity in the world of fiat. Yeah, because these lending platforms that they allude to are flash loans, I, I assume. Yes. So then what it turns it out, I about think, them? is that what we're talking about is loans for speculation. Yeah. So yeah, and arbitrage because that's what flash loans are used for. Exactly. Right? In a in a yeah. single block, you borrow a million dollars and then buy loads of coins with it and then make a profit. And then trade and then, them super fast. Yeah, and then give the give the money yeah. back. So this is like super. This is like speculation. This is like spe- like accelerated, amplified speculation. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like high frequency trading, but like. But, but different <laughs> because yeah. it's all being executed in code, isn't it? In one smart contract. It's like high frequency trading and you've got all these different cryptocurrencies that are making their own money. Yeah, it, we've got yield farming below so we can have oh, yeah. that. Okay, let's keep going. So DeFi will also, you could do wrapped Bitcoins, a way of sending Bitcoin to Ethereum network. So the Bitcoin can be used directly in Ethereum's DeFi system. Wrapped Bitcoins allow users to earn interest on the Bitcoin they lend out via the decentralized lending platforms described above. Prediction markets, markets for betting on the outcome of future events, such as elections. The goal of DeFi versions of prediction markets is to offer the same functionality without intermediaries. Now, if I click this, uh, prediction market selection, blah, blah, blah. Don't need to look at that. In addition to these apps, new DeFi concepts have sprung up around them. Yield farming. For the knowledgeable traders who are willing to take on risk, there's yield farming, where users scan through various DeFi tokens in search of opportunities for larger returns. That doesn't actually explain what it is. Loading. It's effectively July 2017 in the world of decentralized finance. And in the heady days of the initial coin offering, ICO boom, the numbers are only trending up. What's the date on this article? July 2020, updated November. Mm -hmm. So July 2017 was like, the beginning like of a, the, the the beginning of the was it was it the beginning or the beginning of the end of the ICO <laughs> yeah, boom? Yeah, I feel yeah. like it was the beginning of the end of the ICO boom. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it's true. So when the scam started. Yeah. Um. Let's have a look. where it started, where does it explain yield farming? Their tokens, what is DeFi? I keep hearing about pools. <laughs> to illustrate why more money helps, let's break down how Uniswap works. Let's say there was a market for USDC and DAI. These are two tokens, both stable coins, with different mechanisms for retaining their value. They are meant to be worth $1 each all the time. That generally trends to be true for both. The price Uniswap shows for each token in any pooled market pair is based on the balance in each pool. So simplifying this is, a, uh, so simplifying this a lot for illustration's sake, if someone were to set up a USDC die pool, they should, they should deposit equal amounts of both. In a pool with only two USDC and two DAI, it would offer a price of one USDC and one DAI. Is that because they... It would offer a price of one USDC for one DAI. They're saying that they're equivalent. But then imagine that someone put in one DAI and took out one USDC. Then the pool would have one USDC and three DAI. The pool would be very out of whack. A savvy investor could make... 50 cents profit by putting in one one USDC and receiving 1.5 die. It's a 50% arbitrage profit, and that's the problem with limited liquidity. Uh. <laughs> it, 
However, if there were 500,000 and five how of each, a, tr a, a trade for one DAI and one DOC would have a negligible impact on the relative price, which is why liquidity is helpful because it's the amount that's in each side of the pool. Similar yes. effects hold across DeFi. So markets want more liquidity. Uniswap solves this by charging a tiny fee on every trade. It does this by shaving off a little bit from each trade and leaving that in the pool. So one DAI would actually trade for 0.997 USD. DC after the fee, growing the overall pool by 0.003. This benefit benefits liquidity providers because when someone puts liquidity into the pool, they own a share of the pool. If there has been lots of trading in that pool, it is under a lot of fees and the value of each share will grow. Are we with each other? Not really, no. So, Are you, so do, do you understand what's happening? Yeah, so there's there is a, the the pool takes a fee from every time there's a transaction. Okay. And that fee is retained by the pool, the transaction pool. So the pool grows. Yeah. Okay. And the providers uh, essentially the people that are using that pool essentially then own a share of the pool. Ah, so they're incentivized to provide liquidity. So to put yes. money in, yes. but not take money out. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Liquidity added to Uniswap is presented by a token, not an account. So there's no ledger saying Bob owns 0.000000, whatever, 678% of the DAI USDC pool. Bob just has a token in his wallet. And Bob doesn't have to keep the token. He could sell it or use another product. It will explain how people talk about DeFi products as money Legos, which I believe is back here. Yes. Money Legos. So liquidity mining, when DeFi applications entice users to their platform by giving them free tokens, this has been the buzziest form of yield farming yet. So. Okay. Um, so yeah, liquidity mining is like the logical extension of yield farming by giving out free money to people and asking them to put them in the pools. Composability, DeFi apps are open source, meaning the code behind them is public for anyone to view. As such, these apps can be used to compose new apps with the code as building blocks. Um, this is the, I'm, I like to make a distinction between tools and services and how a service could become a tool because it's like Lego blit. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but in the concept good. of composability, another way, DeFi apps are like Legos, the toy blocks children click together to construct buildings, vehicles, and so on. DeFi apps can be similarly snapped together like money Legos to build a new financial, to build new financial products. That is a useful concept. Yeah, I really like um, the old school Ethereum um, programmable money. Yes, that's how I've continued to think about it. Yeah. But money Legos. Let's have a but so pro, what's why money Legos is useful is a useful addition to programmable money as a kind of conceptual as a way to conceive of what's happening, is that it does give you this idea that you can you can program each thing and then attach them, and they'll behave together in a different way than they would apart. Yeah, yeah, that's a really yeah. good point. I'm just having a look through this. How do you Why is there a skull? What it's does just the skull signify. Because they're talking about degens. How DeFi degen are right, we're getting a bit off topic. <laughs> look at this. First there were trendies and then the Yiffy and then then came away. I don't meow. know what a degen is. <laughs> What's a degen? I'm going to another look platform. At the now, so... From first heartbeat to last breath in less than 48 hours but those are the rules of DeFi's newest toy minimal minimally viable monetary experiments the longer it takes you to do due diligence in the cycle the, the lower your alpha so it's basically you just got to dive into untested unregulated financial products yeah to money. wonderful so dgens are generally degenerate bad people with no morals 
I'm just going to search degen. I, I just did it. Sorry, oh, did that's you? bad, bad behaviour. That, so that's yeah. what it means? Yes. Uh, a degenerate used to label anyone guilty of bad behaviour on various occasions. Understood. Yes. What do we think so, so far? I mean, we, we're nearly at the bottom of this DeFi thing. I think um, I th some things are coming into focus in the fog. <laughs> it's quite a clear <laughs> article, actually. Lending platforms, lending markets are one popular form of DeFi, which connects borrowers to lenders of cryptocurrencies. One popular pro platform, Compound, allows users of, to borrow cryptocurrencies or offer their own loans. Users can make money off interest for lending out their money. Compound sets the interest rates algorithmically, so there's a higher demand to borrow a cryptocurrency, the interest rates will be pushed higher. DeFi lending is collateral based, meaning in order to take out a loan, a user needs to put up collateral, often Ether, the token that powers Ethereum. This means users don't give out their identity or associated credit score to take out a loan, which is how normal non-DeFi loans operate. Yeah, so it's basically taking out money to play in the casino. I assume Without that's what it's being credit used. score. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, they're saying that, you know, it's a new form of loan without the need for a credit score or identity yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is moot. Yes. But uh, how are you going to get it in the first place? I mean, you have to be in the space to get the loan, don't you? Yeah. I mean, you're going to need to put up Ether or... Yeah. So it's like you have to have some form of like collateral that can be money. taken away. Yeah. 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 I mean, at least it's collateralized and, and you know. Yes. <laughs> non collateralized. <laughs> uh, how to make money with DeFi? Is investing safe? No, it's risky, but that's not why we're interested in it. <laughs> I love this the you know the crypto news DeFi has increased in activity and popularity it such as the meme coin yam crashed and burned sending the market capitalization from 60 million to zero in 35 minutes whoa what happened i think there was a bug oh i seem to remember other DeFi projects include hot dog and pizza <laughs> They face the same mate. They say they face the same fate and many yeah. a lot of money. In addition, DeFi bugs are unfortunately still very common. Smart contracts are powerful, but they can't be changed once the rules are baked into the protocol, which often makes bugs permanent, thus increasing the uh, risk. Yearn just uh, merged with someone anyway. That's just crypto news that no one actually really cares about. Meme coins. In weird DeFi, the line between games and finance are beginning to grow very fuzzy, very fast. If memes were meant to be built, uh, were meant to build a retail market, it's going to get crushed because it's not a retail market unless you're the first to the new meme. The amount of money that, that like everyone talks about in crypto is crazy. Um, okay, DeFi art, we're going there next. DeFi art, let's do it. So after half an hour of priming ourselves. I do feel like, okay, so we, yeah, we now know a little bit more about the kind of shape and language of the territory. So, DeFi art and wall decor, Zazzle. Well, let's just let's just quickly take a de a, a, de a detour into algorithmically create a created. Um, oh. Hmm. You see, that's quite a letdown. Although I do quite like that Houdini image. <laughs> It is, it is re really let me down. Yeah. Failure means drowning, <laughs> means drowning death. <laughs> like I was I expecting this a... to be full of crazy. Yeah. 
Why is that? Does DeFi mean the same on Zazzle as it does in? I don't think it can do. It must mean something else here. I mean, define gravity by plane. Yeah. DeFi master crypto Christmas ornament. That, I think that's the only, maybe if I put this in quotes. That's the only genuine. Hmm. No, I don't think it made it any difference. What happens if you click on cryptos or cryptocurrency within? Within the search. Yield Farmer Christmas stocking. Yield Farmer face mask. I think that might be a bit of a find actually. Wow. Yeah, that's very cool. Love that I've, hat. <laughs> I know a few people who I feel like puzzling by sending that to them. Oh, I like these uh, Bitcoin coasters. <laughs> Bitcoin tote bad. Get a polka dot phone grip ring holder. The hoodie's got a... Awesome. Yes. Wait, let me just make this big. And then I'm going to use it as our, as the as the cover image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was worth it. Yeah, that was worth the detour. Yeah, that's a bit rubbish. <laughs> and that's the face mask. Okay, so let let's just sorry. let's just back out of Zazzle. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hang on a minute. So a yield farmer is someone who sits on these pools and is doing nothing arbitrage between those two currencies uh it's because they've put money into the pool and the liquidity ah. and because of the liquidity they're earning yield interest got yes. it it's interest basically with a special kind of interest thank you Okay, yes, I remember now. It, it goes in and then it slips out again. Well, should we have a look at the DeFi arts intelligence, sir? Yes. Substack. DeFi DGENs should take one moment to look at crypto art heart. <laughs> okay. We'll look at these two and see what we see what happens next. This guy. The DeFi arts intelligence. Are. Oh, yeah. I think I'm actually subscribed to this guy's uh, newsletter and they're pretty interesting. Actually. Is it this? Is this what it is? Yeah, I think so. Last week's news. The DeFi arts intelligence has a new sponsor, Async Art, Ethereum's premier programmable art movement and platform. You see, I can be a little bit snobby about the crypto art scene. Yeah, by all means. But async is actually, I think that they are like super legit. They are doing really interesting, smart things with programmable art in programmable money. I think it's, I think they are really interesting actually. This week alone, async art artists collectively fetched 300 F at auctions. That's quite a lot of money. Yeah, what's 300 times 600-ish? Uh, 18, 180 something. That's, that's, that's something. It's not nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the, it's sorry, it's record broken with F Boy, a collaboration between acclaimed artists Trevor Jones and Alla, a lot of money. Yes. Of course, it's a lot of money. <laughs> the charming programmable uh, piece sold for a whopping 260F. So what's, do we know what, what's programmable about this image? What does programming add into it? I think we should go have a look. Yeah. Updates once a day to reflect F USD and Bitcoin USD Ethereum network gas prices. 
clever. Young, young Vitalik takes on the role of Picasso's son, Paolo, dressed as Harlequin in this artwork, artwork. But the octahedron Ethereum logo replaces the checkered pattern of the original jester's outfit. Leaning against a large chair, the boy genius fiddles with his fingers in a somewhat nervous manner. Nevertheless, he stares directly at the viewer with what appears to be a confident Mona Lisa-like smile. Wow, the writing's fantastic. Vitalik has no idea what the future has in store for him, but he's prepared to face any obstacle ahead as he begins his life adventure. Wow. So if we came back tomorrow, it would look different then. Yeah. So it's changing according to the value of... F to USD, Bitcoin to USD and Ethereum gas prices. So it changes daily. It doesn't tell us how it changes, does it? Well, I mean, if I have a look at the, the GIF... F price goes up, F price goes down. So the background change is probably why it's really green and happy right now. Mm. That's cool. That's interesting, isn't it? So it's giving us a reading of, of direction, except that, yeah, of like up or down. Mm -hmm. So it's like a visual... It's like an alternative to the stock ticker. Yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted a, um, this is my like future brain. One of the things that I really want is a, like some sort of hologram producing like plate that shows like open street map, 3d buildings of my local area but also has a mountain <laughs> and clouds and it's like local temperature, like um, the oh, price yeah. of just basically all of that live, like, you know, um, pollution, local pollution and um, hay fever. I want to, I want to know about the, the state of communal goodwill in my locality yeah. <laughs> at any one time. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's like, um, has some sort of like commentary on broken windows theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the goodwill goes down, the windows break in my little exactly. community built thing. Yeah, I've always wanted like those kind of like, um, I mean, yeah, it's like a stock ticker, but yeah, as a, like a 3D sculpture or something like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, any, everyone who's listening to Jay ask for this right now, you know, you have a, <laughs> you've got yeah. a sale. <laughs> But I'm really like I'm really uh, a bit captivated by the description here because it's a new form of art writing. I think there's a there's really? a whole well, it's very it's kind of like somewhere between a kind of Etsy description, but it's also there's just a touch of there's a kind of art speak in here. There's it's an just art enough. history. There's, yeah. a, there's kind of art history referencing, but all like the big, the, the heart, the canon, you know, it's got, it's Picasso, it's the Mona Lisa. Yeah, it's helped by the artwork in that sense as well, though, right? Like, yeah. That, I mean, you can see why this sold for. Oh, yeah. $141,000. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm a little bit obsessed with how this world is creating new forms of, like, if you imagine every artwork in async has a description that is really an important part as an artist statement always is, or as the artwork description always is, really important to the value of the artwork, mm -hmm. which means that there's a new occupation out there which is yeah. about yeah. writing art descriptions for crypto artworks. Yeah, I would, well, someone has the job, clearly. Yes. But also, yeah. I mean, it's just a, an extension of that. Um, I think I've talked about this before or come into it with me. Like a friend of mine got told off because she used to write um, descriptions of the, of um, at home in her, in her private life, she used to write a lot of fan fiction 
like slash erotic fan fiction. And in her day job, she wrote for a travel website. And um, she's like a really good writer, but she used to get told off for writing like the bridal or like honeymoon holidays. The descriptions of the holidays would always be too steamy. <laughs> even, even though they were totally innocuous, you know, like you know, the editor, her boss would always be like, I don't know, I can't remember what it was for like travel.com or, you know, somewhere like that. But yeah, she was always getting told off for writing too steamy. <laughs> that's, suggestive, that's so suggestive. sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was just having a look at some of the other art. So we can have a look at some of the other. Mm, you see, this work is a first of a series of new 3D anaglyph images. Composed I don't know what an anaglyph is. But you can see, like, so I think one of the reasons my, I will opine on why the thing we just looked at, the name that I can't remember, that sold for a lot of Heath Boy. Yeah. I, like, its description is uh, aimed at crypto people. Yeah. So I think that there's a whole load of, like when the Crypto Kitty sold, it really felt like, because it was speaking to crypto culture. Yeah. And I think that that is why so much of the crypto art is kind of speaking to, if it isn't speaking to crypto culture, then it's probably not getting valued. Yeah. And I think that's well, quite yeah, interesting. That, yeah. yeah, that's really yeah. interesting. I also think yeah. it's not just interesting, but just like, can you imagine in 1996 when you founded Furtherfield that a 1437 by 2160 pixel PNG that's 6.63 megabytes would sell for $141,000? No. Like when you think about it like that, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. 6.63 megabytes. What's interesting about this, though, is that that because you're not you're buying something which is a endlessly updatable PNG. So it's always got to sit online. Mm -hmm. So it's actually always. A, it's a networked. It's a it has to be networked. Otherwise, it isn't the work. Yeah, I wonder and that's quite how interesting. I wonder if there's like if someone who's watching this could tell us that if you pulled the artwork down and then reconnected it to the Ethereum blockchain in a week's time, it would just reconnect. You know how you can do off-chain transactions? Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder if if like it would work when it reconnected, you know what I mean? Like when it reconnected, yeah. it yeah, would yeah. the current. Uh, oh, but I wonder what whether it is an artwork when it isn't connected to the, when it's off-chain. Like, is it still an artwork? <laughs> if it's on my usb drive yeah i don't think it is i don't think it's an artwork then i think it's only an artwork when it's connected so there's layers, layers. Boy. this token is not meant for sale and will be sent to vitalik the creator of ethereum the owner can choose between several accessories to adorn f boy with what does that mean so they can update the artwork with these. With so this. the owner can choose what, they can accessorize the, the owner artwork. of the token, which is Vitalik. So, cause he's the subject of the artwork has been given this token and he has chosen to not update the artwork. Hang on a minute. <laughs> So the artwork, when, when we say this token, which token are we talking about? So this- The layers a, of the a, token. So, that, so I've, I, think, I think it says ownable layers, one. Okay. So if we have a look at this piece of artwork, there are three ownable layers. So you can, So it's a state change in the artwork.
so this is the artwork as it currently is. And there are three owner ownable layers of the artwork. And how do the layers of the ownable artwork relate to what we're looking at now? Well, we're on async, so we might as well have a look <coughs> and find out from there. I think we have come to the, I think we've come to the- The right place. The right place, yeah, to think about DeFi art. Okay, how does it work? Master versus layers. Async allows you to purchase both masters and layers. Think of a master as a one-to-one -one edition art piece and layers are individual components that make up the master image. Once live, the master will continually check its layers and update its appearance based on the layers owner's input. So you can have multiple owners. You can have an owner of the master, but then you can have people owning the layers and they can choose. So is it a bit like is it a bit like being like a, fr a freeholder and yes, a leaseholder? Yes, that's a really good analogy. <laughs> analogy okay. Okay, yeah, that works. When you buy a layer, you have exclusive control to affect your favorite artist's work. Layers are endowed with special abilities since... Uh, decided by the artist. When you change something on a layer, the master image will reflect this regardless of who owns it. It's, it is good, isn't it? For artists, you decide the parameters of your art and grant exclusive control over any aspects to individual collectors. Let someone change the state of the background position of a character. You see, I want like... Wow, we've nearly been going for are we nearly done yeah well we can go on for a little bit longer but i was just thinking wouldn't it be cool in the future if you had like people owning the background sets for cartoons in like unity or something like that and those assets are all nft'd which is possible already um and then those layers you can decide to turn off like the Homer Simpsons or the Simpsons couch in the, in the introduction, because you own that <laughs> layer of the, yeah. And then for that episode, the characters then do their thing and they will fall over because there's no couch to sit on. <laughs> well, this, is, just... this, is, this is in the world in which Simpsons where there's actual real physics in the Simpsons cartoon. <laughs> it's, a, it's a world in which Simpsons never ends because they're just AI characters that are yeah, constantly yeah. just churning out. In a procedural out. environment. In procedural episodes, yeah. 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 Like Ian Cheng is like given yeah. the directorship of the, of the Simpsons and then it, it goes on forever, which would be amazing. I mean, I th it's interesting, like ETH Boy, because then the question is, what's, th what's the life of this work going forward? Because like those yeah. layers. So there's one, so you have this, this is F boy, the master or ETH yeah. boy. And then there's this one layer here, which changes I the think, thing. Is it one layer or is it four layers? Oh, it's one layer. It's one layer with four states. Gotcha. Okay. And that token oh, yeah. so has can... been sent to Vitalik. So if Vitalik can change the state. Oh, so basically it can be like, Today, Vitalik feels like this. Yeah. Like if Vitalik yeah. wanted to use this as his kind of status uh, de declaration. Yeah. 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 Imagine if this was it, hanging in the hallway of a, a finance, a crypto finance institution in 2040 or something. You see, you can imagine this like, so this, like, I feel like really what needs to happen is that they need to collaborate with Vitalik like it hanging in a financial institution where the where the kind of CEO or the chair of the board has these different layers and they basically use this as a way to communicate you know like normally you have these oil paintings of the kind of directors of great and grand institutions well instead you have this but you have the layer for them to communicate about how they're feeling or like some set some status update, basically. Just imagine like connecting up all of the crazy internal dashboards that large corporations have to like 
that bland corporate art that you get all around corporate buildings yeah yeah and so like if people are t- this is really grim actually like if people are doing badly on their year end <laughs> it turns oh, into a anonymous bosch painting or something <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, well, that was extremely illuminating. I'm just wondering what else there was. Oh, I have my, I'm just going to have a quick look to see what else is there on the DeFi art. Um, fr- from I really do like Ecosia because it gives you such different results to Google. Very good. Um, art on Ethereum. Okay, DeFi explained. NFTs. There isn't that much in the DeFi art space. We should just finish looking at this guy's newsletter, and then we'll call yes. it. I mean, I think there's there's a lot of stuff in the kind of rares and NFT communities where people like without all that kind of. Uh, energetic play and testing we don't end up with this so yeah those, exactly those communities are really important <coughs> to kind of open open the space up and I, I do think this is really interesting i helped artists biard ice ionson create an advocacy campaign around his latest async art masterpiece the gate this piece sold for 8.2 f oh look this has got um Welcome to the gate, an entrance in solitude, relief, and peace. Throughout the day, the work's form changes as the time flows on. You may discover its origin and purpose. This piece is created from hand-selected images of Eastern and Western toilets, and we used to train an AI machine learning model and creatively springs forth from the crossroads of man and machine, certainty and uncertainty, and high and low culture. See what I mean about the writing? The writing is really important in this stuff. Yeah, but I also think we're in that situation where just international art speak or international art writing has got to that point where it's like just, it's come so- Heat, heat death. <laughs> yeah. heat, heat death of the art writing. Yeah, I world. mean, it's just, yeah. just so many students now have gone through post i don't know i blame tony Blair, but like you know they've gone through that pit, that world that that this kind of speech is is everywhere yeah yeah it's secondary true. sales on leading ethereum art platform super rare eclipsed the one million mark this week notably royalties from super rare secondary sales are automatically distributed to artists via smart contracts a feature that has no analog in the mainstream art world Illustrator Jose Delbo's comic Death sold out of its 250 editions on art platform Maker's Place. I mean, super rare, like that, that's real grassroots community. That's, that's real kind of crypto grassroots community a couple of years ago. Yeah. And now it's like, um, I'm not going to say mainstream because none of this is mainstream. No. Like, well, yeah. it's not mainstream, but it's, it's, there's a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, that's where, where are those stats. So there's 10, 10.8 thousand artworks on Super Rare. There's 4.2 million in sales and 1 million secondary market sales. I mean, I'd I'd really like to see I'd like to see the graph curves on these because I think it's all really it's all gone from nothing to everything really quickly. Watch the market move. Mm, it's a shame that they don't have like a blog. Oh, they do have a blog. Let's have a look to see if they've just written about any. <laughs> it's really weird that the crypto space is all about decentralization and, you know, I like <laughs> owning medium. So. And everything's on medium. It's crazy. 
<sighs> it's trying. What happened to steam it? Wasn't that trying to set itself up as the decentralized medium? Is that still a thing? Is that how you spell it? Steve.it? I think so. It's not secure. Hmm. Uh, no. no. Hmm. Well, Super Res Blog's dead. I think that's a good place to end it. That has been extremely enjoyable. Thank you. That was really good. I wouldn't yeah. have, I wouldn't have done that on my own. So I'm <laughs> very, very appreciative. Don't go into the it, DeFi. You, kind of like need to, you need slowing down sometimes because it's like it's it's both too difficult and too boring sometimes to kind of like do this slow ploddy work of like really trying to work out how things all piece together and yeah. how they compare to other things in the Yeah, in I learned quite world. a bit there as well. Yeah. Even just yeah. like swimming, even if you swim in it, it's like yeah. 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 Mostly I don't no longer concern myself with the technical details of these things. Yeah. I like to imagine what people are doing. That I think that's my way of understanding things. Yeah. Like and how are they feeling in their bodies as they're doing? <laughs> like is it like a game and they're just like trying to get like is it is it all very gamified or are they doing a nine to five or mm -hmm. are they never off their devices or are they is it all like is it a very small group of people like, like all that stuff yep yeah. um the from the nft communities that i frequent on telegram and discord mm -hmm. everyone's just making memes that i think like i mean it's really other internet style squad production <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all they are doing if they're not programming they're making memes yeah well, uh, what what are you do, what are you up to um, at the moment? What would you like to share? Oh, um, my time is split between kind of blockchain art, experimenty things, and creating live action role plays. Uh, so the two things that are in my current focus are culture stake. So this is the new framework and decentralized app for voting for the culture that you want to see in your place. So I'm a little bit obsessed with like the relationship between art and locality mm -hmm. and who gets to say what happens in a place. And then if you layer decentralization over the top of this then you get trans locality so like how we all get to relate to locality differently yeah etc so that's one thing uh, land, land ship is a really interesting term there from tim uh from kenneth olwig land ship as in oh, friendship yes, yes. uh mm, my friend who you may also know, you do definitely know, uh, Tim Waterman has written a yeah, fair amount kind of about land ship as well. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. original use of the term, people will will talk about that they're in land ship with their hometowns. Yeah. So, and they feel like they have a stake. In, yes. In that So, in that so I think often, unfortunately, artistic culture, like, like, international art culture of the type that we were talking about tends to uh, amputate people from landship. And we're really interested with culture stake in reinstating those kinds of relationships between art and place. That's what we're doing there. And then I'm actually currently working on a live action role play with your previous guest, Cade DM, on a LARP called uh, the Treaty of Finsbury Park. Wonderful. And this is a multi-species uh, revolution live action role play that will happen at Summer Solstice next year. Awesome. Inshallah, though. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's wicked. Well, thank you so much for coming into that with me. It's been really fun. Thanks, Jen. And uh, yeah, be well. You too. Bye. Bye.